So guys, um, yeah, welcome to my new clip. This time I've made a patchwork coat that is also quilted. And the first kind of images here are me trying to figure out the patchwork style. And I've cut everything in 50 by 15 centimeter squares. And with all of my linens and kind of cottons and some of them are like eco print leftovers. And then I was just playing around um, stitching the pieces together, first row by row. And everything with one cm seam allowance. So actually from like a 15 by 15 square, take kind of two cm away, you get like 13. So they are like 13. And I'm wearing it here, you can see. So I went for a diamond kind of pattern. The fabric I'm using right there is a, um, actually a cotton calico that has some like um, stains on it from the rain. So I really like it. It's really kind of speckled, but it was from the rain. It was outside. So um, this is the size there. Now I'm making um, another big piece. When you see the instruction that comes with the pattern, you will um, see exactly how to kind of place everything. Now, the, this pink kind of salmon colored fabric is going to be the lining here. You can see that. And I put it on my table first and now I'm covering it with the like wadding, padding, whatever you call it. This one, I quite like it. It was um, 0.5 cm, I think. Might have been 0.4. And the piece I have there is supposedly um, around two meter by one meter 50 or one meter 60. But I feel it was much larger, but these things kind of stretch out too. So I'm, um, I have my work table outside and it's covered in fabric, but I'm also using these huge clamps on one side and I actually pinned it a little bit on the other side. Now I'm taking my outside part, this is actually for the front. So it's um, a nice sandwich there. So the good thing is, if you cover your table with fabric or cork or something, you can pin into it. So now I'm pinning everything kind of together, but also a little bit to the table so it stays um, in its place and stable. Because I'm using a diamond pattern, it might um, move a little bit. It's all on bias, right? Speeding that up a bit. It took a lot longer than it looks. <laughs> So now I'm um, putting the paper and as you can see, these are like the modifications. So I got rid of the extra there for, um, for the V-neck and also on the hemline, I made it a bit shorter just so it can fit the pattern better there. Like, I mean, my patchwork pattern. Um, now the top view, um, I'm pinning it a little bit but actually I'm going to trace it with a pencil. So the pinning is really just to keep it properly in place. I'm not gonna cut it like this. Um, I want to get the patchwork really nice and right. So it's better to trace and to see exactly if you've kind of matched everything up well. So there you see me go. I'm actually using a proper pencil. It doesn't really matter because all the edges are bound with bias tape. So. Um, the markings are gone, no worries. And this is also where I'm going to cut, so my pin line. <laughs> and then once I've done one side, I wanna um, flip it over and also trace the other side. Now I can cut it out and I wanna cut and pin at the same time. So to keep all the sandwich layers in check, I'm cutting and pinning, cutting and pinning, and cutting first the whole thing and then I cut it in the middle just to make it kind of a little bit easier. The whole point is to keep everything stable. So now I'm doing the, um, the big piece for the back in one go, and it's all the same steps. So first the lining, then the filler, and then the top layer 
Here you can actually see a little bit what the pattern is like. It's like these kind of Tetris L shapes. Now, tracing left side, tracing the right side, and then cut and pin, cut and pin. And also pin the surfaces. I actually pinned um, exactly following the pattern here, the diamond. I pinned the crossings, I pinned kind of in the middle, I pinned here, I think. And now I'm doing the sleeves. Um, I've made one big piece for the sleeve, and then also kind of they're mirrored. So, this was the one that I've tried first without showing. So I'm actually just stitching in the ditches, which means I'm following the, um, the pattern. And the first step actually is to throw a quick basting stitch all around all the pieces, just so like they can't fall apart. You put your machine on like a really high um, stitch number, like a five or something, and then you have really big long stitches. And then once it's all, um, safe and secure, then I start to quill the surfaces. And I usually kind of work my way from the middle, from the center to the outside. And I've made that really fast, but it takes forever. <laughs> the patch working too, so I cut out all the kind of like tedious bits. So we're coming to the sewing part. Now, shoulders first. Um, the pieces are really kind of easy to work with now. The thing is though, we have tons of layers and it's really fluffy. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but let's go right sides on right sides. And this version had a 1.5 cm seam allowance, but in my um, pattern on Etsy, it's actually like an inch now. So it's 2.5. So it makes the flat felling much, much easier. It's also important to match everything well up. So um, seams that kind of cross or touch or whatever you do on one side, you should try to do on the other side as well. So it looks nice. So now I'm just stitching it um, like this. And I'm using kind of a little piece of plastic there, which is from kind of wrapping parcels. And I put it under the footer. I see that a lot in um, Atelier Saison videos and this kind of gives you more of a I don't know it gives you more pressure over a bigger surface and then your fabrics can bubble and like move around so that's that my machine sometimes plays tricks on me when the fabric is kind of heavy and like too many seams the thread kind of rips a lot she is old, but jack machines are quite nice. These are usually Chinese like factory machines and they work very steady and they look quite all right too. I wish though I had a, um, a, di a direct transfer kind of motor or whatever that's called that doesn't make a sound. So we want to open the seams now. Um, we want to press them open a little bit to have a look. And then we need to unpick the basting stitches. Um, if that's too tedious for you, you can also try to do it without the initial basting stitches, but I find that really, um, I don't know, scary. <laughs> so, <laughs> quick unpick there, and you wanna unpick both sides. We are going to chop down everything, um, except for the lining of the front part. And this one we're gonna fold over everything else. So now I'm starting to cut. I've also sped it up a lot. The unpicking always takes a moment. You can see it close up. So these are the basting stitches and you need to remove them. I usually go kind of like um, maybe every inch, every kind of two or three cm, I try to cut um, the thread and then just on one side and usually the other side you can just pull. And once that's all done, we have them separate and I cut everything except for the orange um, salmon colored fabric that is the lining for the front panel there. But all the fluff has to go. You leave around like, mm, for the, like a, you can leave like a, like a centimeter or something. There can be a bit inside the flat felt seam, but not too much. So I'm ironing it, ironing it, uh, ironing it 
to the back, towards the back. And then I want to kind of fold it in over the kind of cut off seam allowance and I'm also pinning and holding it in place. Everything there kind of moves around from the layers is a bit springy and puffy. So lots of pins to get it right. Um, this was just 1.5 cm seam allowance. So it was a lot trickier and with the volume of everything, it became quite hard. So I'm doing the other side now. I've unpicked it. I've um, reduced the seam allowance there except for one, which is the front lining and then we fold that over the really short trimmed one. We want to pin it again and then we can stitch it. That looks great. Now over to the machine and I'm stitching it from the left side so it's really easy to see. And I'm also using my tweezers to kind of keep that seam allowance in there. It was a little bit short so it always wanted to kind of like pop out. But it's a really good way. Use some kind of tool with a pointy point and then roll it under. It's a little bit like um, needle applique, needle turn applique, what's it called? Yes, needle turn applique. So I'm taking my time. I've sped it up already, but it, it does take a little bit. Again, the tweezers help. So I'm also wearing cozy coat and the lazy pants today again. Actually, I wear lazy pants probably every day. So now the other side, really quick. And there we go. The shoulders are nice. So I'm putting it on the mannequin now and it's really cool. I was so excited about making this. <laughs> I was really excited about making this. Um, this year Christmas probably gonna be canceled again. No money and quarantine rules and this and that. My salary's just been cut. So. This is my kind of comfy fall coat. Makes me think of Christmas. <laughs> so yes, next, um, next step, let's uh, attach the sleeves. So kind of the armhole in this case is just a straight line. The cozy coat pattern is super simple and minimalist. That's why I love it. We can completely focus on just kind of the finishes and the material, we can focus on what we want. So give it a quick pin. Also now in the final pattern, the, the seam allowance is 2.5 cm, um, which is an inch, and right sides on right sides. To the machine, and let's ditch that. Unfortunately, I didn't have my um, super bright LED spot for the machine yet. If you've watched the other video with the crew neckline, this one already has um, the powerful sunlight, basically. I mean, it's not sunlight, it's like icy blue. So the next sleeve here. Also, the V-neck version, um, it's very easy, there's uh, not much you have to think about. If it's with the bias finishes, the one without bias finish, you have to kind of stop a little bit earlier here, but not in this case. 
So we want to um, do exactly the same things we did with the shoulder seam. Um, we have to open um, the basting stitches, unpick them real quick, then trim all of these layers down. And in this case, we are only going to keep the seam allowance from the front and back there, not from the sleeve, because we are folding it towards the sleeve. You have to kind of get in there a little bit um, where the seam allowances from the shoulder seam meet. It's a little bit thicker, so get as much out of there as possible. I mean, it's also for the quilting and patchworking in general, don't go super heavy. We already have many layers, so it becomes quite tricky if you go for like denim or something. Oh my God, most machines can probably deal with it. We have to keep it thin because we have lots and lots of layers. But that's what makes this magical because you can turn summer fabrics like linen into something that is totally fall friendly and great for the house. Silks as well. So now let's flat fell it. It's all pinned in place and I'm now just edge stitching from the left side with the regular um, footer there. Unfortunately it's a little bit dark always at my needle point. For me personally, I quite like it because like this is super easy to thread the needle because the light is behind it and I can see the eye. But for videos, it's not too good. Oh, something's going dark here, I think. <laughs> it's like the evening, so I might end up sitting in the dark. Maybe I can make it all a bit lighter so it at least looks like it's day. Yeah, so. This one's done. And now the next one. Take your time with these things. You know, it's really kind of like important to take that one easy because you can see the stitches from the outside. So you really want to um, be slow and kind of steady. And there we go. I really like it, like it's so graphic and dramatic the way it falls. I can totally understand why Isimiyake got obsessed with pleats because they do the same thing. I'm slightly getting obsessed with quilts right now. <coughs> it's not Corona guys. But when is this going? Ah, it's so nice. It's just like what it does, it has its own sort of physics now I really like it and the colors for me a dream especially for inside the house I think outside I would be a bit scared get it dirty <laughs> but no it's, it's, I love this coat that's why I'm wearing it right now Anyway, so now it's time to kind of bind all the sides. For the finishes, let me show you guys here. The um, side seams are all bias bound. So we want to make some continuous bias tape actually for this. And I used a 50 by 50 centimeter piece of linen and did the continuous bias tape kind of trick which you can find also in the instructions and I ended up having a little bit too little so definitely go for like 55 by 55 or even 60 by 60 cm which is like what like two by two feet and then you have enough you need a lot of bias tape for that one so the sides in one go including the cuff there and for the cuff we need to make um, mitered corners. You can also find that in the instruction. There's a little kind of step-by-step -step, um, schematic for this. So, oh, and the most important, we stitch it for, from the inside first. So you attach the bias tape from the inside and now we're working from the outside. 
and for this I'm changing my footer I'm using like an edge stitching footer which has like a kind of um, which is two flexible little feet there and one can sort of rest on your edge and hold it down it's really nice I like them and this one's really old and rusty but it still kind of works super nice so now we are working on the right side of the fabric the bias tape folds around nicely. We are binding the edges. We are not kind of doing the classic bias tape. So you can see the tape on both sides. I um, used 4cm white tape, which gives us a visible edge of 1cm. So we have kind of 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So adjusting it a little bit. This one is old, so if it's on the wrong position, like the needle just like smashes into it. So I always have to try first. For, that, for some reason, I've been meaning to show this forever, so there it was. Now, this one is smooth like butter, so I'm just easy peasy walking along the edge and it kind of feels like walking because it goes like mm, mm, mm. and it doesn't really but it's so cool and then all in one go like the entire thing like from the front side around the sleeve we do a little hop mitered corner there and then we go back to the the other side now mitering from it? Oh no, what happened? Oh, the thread broke. So now I'm coming to the mitered corner and now you can kind of fold it. You don't have to stitch the kind of edge there, but you can fold it nicely and you get a really good corner. So sleeve again and this time I'm using the tweezers kind of Squeeze it in there. The good thing is, so like this, we don't have to stitch in the ditch. We do see a stitch on the bias tape, but um, if we add sti edge stitch it very well, we have a super nice and clean stitch that goes all the way al uh, along. And on the other side, we also have a reasonably nice finish. And with stitching in the ditch, it's always kind of oof, a little bit tricky, especially for beginners. And I'm kind of, yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling uncomfortable with it most of the time. So I like to do it this way around. And I kind of really love edge stitching. There we go. Another couple of mitered corners. And voila. Left and right are both bound. Now we can just simply... Um, stitch the side seams together for this purpose now we want to kind of flip it all inside out just a bit of like fun effects right sides on right sides and Millie joined me also in the studio there she actually wanted to join me right now too but then she never showed so match everything up nicely because this edge is kind of like we can see it um, you can also stitch kind of like, you can start a little bit sort of what earlier, if you like. In the end, I'm not showing it, I've also done a little um, uh, bar here, like a kind of block stitch. Anyway, this is also important now, that's why I'm doing it standing up, just to show it, but rather better do it on a table, match everything up nicely. So the pattern on the sides kind of has uh, something going on and then ideally both sides the same. So over to the machine 
and we want to do a very severe uh, reverse stitch here, back stitch, to really keep everything nicely. And then basically, um, it's 1.5 cm seam allowance, so you can just go with the footer um, along the 1 cm bias tape and then you get pretty much the seam allowance. It's easy peasy. Just make sure the edges are really matched up. And then tricky bit there, the armhole show, like armhole seam under the arm. These are so many layers, my thread actually just broke and I cut it out. But it's kind of normal <laughs> with this machine. And I also feel that the, the sewing, quality, uh, sewing needle quality here in Thailand is really bad. <laughs> I come from Germany and we have, actually in my hometown, we have Schmetz, Smets, I don't know how um, English or American people call it. And they're like, they make the best needles. And here we can't get them, really. And most of the time they're fake too. The same with the sewing yarn. You, you just can't really get good yarn here. So anyway, anyhow, um, let's uh, iron this seam open, press it open, make it all nice and smooth and make the bias tape look good. This is linen bias tape. It's so beautiful. Um, I will never ever in my life ever buy um, store-bought bias tape again because it's so ugly. <laughs> and the linen um, that I made for this one is really beautiful. It just um, really gives that extra feel, texture, expensive. It's beautiful. I'm using the little tiny uh, sleeve board there. It's so cute. But it's very good for these purposes. It, this is quite a strong curve, so um, you will never get it like super flat. Just kind of do your best. Looks okay. So these need to be, yeah, really nice and open because now we can bind everything else in one big go. Quick check, yay, I love it. So again, we are stitching the bias tape from the inside first. And now find kind of a spot somewhere on the back where nobody will see, whatever here. It can be a lot around the side seam too if you want. And then first we stitch it with like 1 cm, a little bit less maybe, it depends if the quilt is really thick. And we just have 4 cm of bias tape, we might want to stitch a little bit less, but not too little. So 1 cm should work out well. Again, miter the corner, so I try to zoom in a bit. We stitch now to the corner, and then you want to kind of like fold the bias tape back. Yeah, pivot the needle there and then continue. So we have this kind of extra bit there that we need to kind of flip it and have something to fold it. It's really not rocket science. Or you go like very tight and you can kind of make them round a bit the corners. So this is just a, you know, it's just a bit of a busy job. Oh, I know. <laughs> this is Ash, she just turned 12. Now you can start hear him yapping in the background. It's my little, little, little old and sick chihuahua. He has brain problem like Alzheimer's. And at some point when, yep, when he wants something, he wants something, he won't give up. <laughs> uh, whether it's in the middle of a tutorial video or the middle of the night. Uh, okay. I 
So, that was me taking quick care of him, giving him a hug. He needs his regular cuddles, he's also blind, and then he gets lost and he doesn't know what's going on. Anyway, so, let's continue this monumental bias binding. From the inside, stitch, stitch, stitch. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough tape, so I will run out very soon. I think this took me a good like 20 minutes, but I've sped it up to like what, around three? I know it feels much longer. I try to keep my videos shorter, guys, but it doesn't work like this. I feel it's much better to see everything seamlessly. I, I feel that's best. I also feel people should, like if you're not a sewing person or something, you like to go shopping, you have to be aware of how much work it actually is. Um, buying a super cheap t-shirt can never work out, you know, like the math just doesn't work. Buying a super cheap winter coat, like how do they make it happen? I mean, I know how, I used to work in German department stores and I actually used to be the one designing winter coats. But guys, it's always child labor. It's always Bangladesh. Just don't go for it. It's better to make your own, buy secondhand or buy something actually kind of where you know where it was made. For some reason, it's really expensive designer brands who produce in France or whatever. They are at least not employing children, unless when, um, unless they kind of like, you know, are lying about it. <laughs> so it's still better to make our own clothes, quite frankly. So there, I ran out, but I kept it all in so you guys can have a quick look. So first, I'm piecing on now um, another piece. So. Um, I left a little bit of seam allowance, like a 2cm, 1 inch, something like that. And now I'm first extending kind of the bias tape that ran out there. So when there is an entire jacket attached to it, of course it's not ideal, but it's totally manageable. Um, you can't just do it in a straight line, it, it's okay. Ideally you want to do it like diagonally, but I'm really not good at it. So I just do it in a straight line. And then we trim that seam allowance back really fiercely and we want to finger press it. For the linen it works great, for cotton as well. If you're like on the silk or something, might want to get the iron. And now I can just continue. See it was like right in the middle there on the back, missing a good like 20 to 30 cm, like a, like a foot or something. And now, see, I have left another like um, inch at the start. So I can piece that together now too, to get like the full seamless look and feel. Let's zoom in. So you stitch exactly to where you um, started. And then again, kind of fold it, right sides on right side, and now we stitch the bias tape together and it's like seamless. So now I'm fixing a little bit here and there. It was really late at night. I was so tired, but I also love this. So now I'm stitching from the other side. I've changed the footer and now I'm doing the edge stitch all the way around. And you can now really see the beautiful kind of bias tape happening with the mitered corners here that look kind of like, like this. And now I also kind of did a quick tag here and we're done. It's so late. <laughs> I put the brightness up so it looks, <laughs> it looks fresher. <laughs> yeah, 
and of course I have to try it on. I love this coat guys. Get the pattern in my Etsy shop. Please subscribe to my channel. I really wish I had more followers. I really need more followers. Um, yeah. So, please subscribe. See you guys. And yeah, get the pattern in my shop. I'm always available for messenger messages and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye guys.